Okay, after watching that part of the video, um, realized I made a mistake. When I resized the gun, I never reset that scale. So if I do reset that scale just like this, um, with the skin modifier on there, if I unhighlight the skin modifier, you can see that it gets bigger. So the object is scaled up. Okay. So what I actually need to do is get rid of the skin modifiers on all these before I before I scale it, before I reset the scale. And that was just me forgetting to reset the scale after I did scale it to the to the hands. And like I said, it's important when doing this kind of stuff that you always reset all your things and, and I blew it. But while I'm at this, what I'm going to do is just to show, spend a couple more minutes to hide this really quick. I'm just going to break all these guys and just kind of relink some of this stuff back here real quick. But the reason I'm going to break it is because I want to move this to the center right here of the um, of the trigger guard. Basically that gives me the ability to if I wanted to, I'll show you in a sec what uh, the reason I'm going to do that, and it's really just for fun. But what I think, let me get this stuff again. Nothing's linked. Um, get the get the bullet in there as well. Okay, just hide unselected. No, hide unselected. Okay, I'm going to break all these links and I'm going to hit the reset scale. Okay, so now if I look at my scale, it's all 100% on all these guys. The bullet too. Okay. I'm going to make that black so it I'm going to make a little bit bit of a lighter gray so I can always pull it out. So I can see it always. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, just for the sake of argument, like I was explaining earlier, how it doesn't make a difference if I combine all this stuff or not, um, I can actually go ahead and combine it. But now that I think about that, I'm going to lose the pivot for my mag. Actually, no because I got all my bones already aligned to everything. So I'm not going to lose anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. We'll see if anything, if I forgot anything, which happens. I'm just going to attach it all together and just call this Glock 21. Okay. Then I'm going to unhide all. You can see I'm at zero. If I go to view, local, I'm at zero, and, well, at my rotation, I'm at zero, and my scale, I'm at a hundred. If I look at my top view, and hit my grid, see I'm pretty centered. Okay, so I'm still good, and now I'm combined into one mesh, and then I add the skin modifier, which again is here, I have a hotkey for that. Okay, and I add my bones. And I'm just going to get all of these guys. Select. Okay. And then really, all I need to do... So I'm going to say, take my weapon base. I'm going to edit my envelopes. I'm going to go by vertices. I'm going to actually set, check select element, which means I just got to click on the vert of any one of these solid pieces and everything gets, gets grabbed. And what I'm going to do first is just get everything. I'm going to put it all to the base at one 
absolute effect. So the whole thing's red. So if I move this bone, the whole thing goes. If I move the slide, nothing's going to happen. Okay, I'm just going to move down my line. Click off so I don't pick anything. I'm going to get my trigger, which is actually two elements in one. Okay, I'm selecting my trigger bone, and then I'm just going to absolute effect that to be one. Do my mag. I just got to click on one point somewhere. It gets the whole mag. Set that guy to one. If I want to speed up this, I can keep this this active. So I'm gonna get my bullet here. I need to look in wireframe because it's inside the weapon. I'm just gonna click one point on the bullet somewhere, then hit one. And then I do my slide. Now I gotta be careful with my slide a little bit that I grab my sight on the front as well as well as the barrel. Okay. And I make sure I'm on slide here and I hit one. And I just check and see if I missed anything by moving everything around. Okay, you can see I forgot to, to redo my linking, so let me hide selection here. And grab these three are the ones that need to link to here. Again, this this needs to link to the mag, and this needs to link to the root. Okay, doesn't matter how many times you do it. So all that moves. I want to be on my pivot of my object. All that moves, and then the bullet and the mag should go together. Okay, so on hide all. So now again, everything should go. Okay, just go to local here. Mag should go, and the bullet should stay with it, and the mag goes nice. Make sure no verts get left behind. Okay, just want to do do a test to make sure everything everything works. Check my trigger. Okay, it's working. And then I check my slide, and it's working. And it leaves behind the guard. Oh, you have to see what it also leaves behind, however is that little box that I put inside here to make sure that it's not empty. So good thing I checked, just hit edit envelope, go back to slide, and I want to get this this box here, okay, which is really just a couple of verts. Kinda hard to see them highlighted. And I'm just gonna make that one. Okay again because I was going by by element made that easy so now when I move it back that box that's inside here to avoid missing back faces is going with it just fine so now one mesh is basically exactly the same thing and my scales all reset so I'm good and I just wanted to make sure that I came back and corrected that because it's that's very important that if I'd exported like this the gun would have just not matched up and I would have been scratching my head I'm trying to figure out you know why you know what's what's going on everything looks fine in max but it doesn't look good in the game and just so you know the reason that I decided to go ahead and move that is because now I can do a little Jesse James okay a little, a little flipping of the gun right around that trigger right around his finger if I want to and that'll be kinda of fun and just so you know this this right here is gonna follow that root that uh, socket that we've we've done and the hands are also gonna follow that socket which is actually just going to automatically put the hands in the gun but if at any moment I want to take the gun out of his hands I can always take this bone and the hands and everything else will stay. Imagine all the hands are connected to this. So imagine this is, is the whole entire arm system. I can take this guy and really do whatever I want with it. I can have him toss it up in the air and it, and it flips around and then he catches it kind of thing, you know what I mean? For for idle animations or, or whatever I want to do. So that's why I always give myself uh, a weapon base bone. Like I said, I could call it weapon anim. It really doesn't matter. If you come here, you can see 
it renamed it here. As soon as I renamed the bone, it renamed it in the skin modifier. It's, it's, it's no big deal. And uh, yeah. that that's really all I wanted to to make sure that I added onto that 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 portion of the video that you have to make sure that this stuff gets gets collapsed. That your your scale, not so much your rotation and your movement. That can kind of be anywhere, but uh, absolutely 100% guaranteed that your scale has to be evened out. You know, it has to be collapsed, um, which could be done either here reset scale or just hitting it with a reset X form okay so this gun is ready to go and I can just I can pretty much export it just by selecting everything going to actor X here just browse where I want it to go name it here and I'd call it you know Glock 21 SK mesh for skeletal mesh I just hit save mesh ref pose and it's it's going to work. I'm not going to do it because I don't have an output path yet. I haven't just, you know, put everything where I'm going to be. If you want, I'm going to go through these settings, but if you want uh, to do this early, you can you can hit pause and check these settings. These settings work. Big big one here is only selected. Persistent paths and settings just make it so every time you close max and open it back up, all this stuff stays the same. You can see I've got these these other other names and stuff going on from from earlier work. Okay, all skin type is another important one. Without that checked, it won't it won't pick it up. I always hit no log files. You can say call unused dummies. I I rarely have any unused dummies, so I don't really need to worry about that. And all the rest of this stuff down here, I never mess with it. Okay, I don't I haven't done any real morph targeting or anything like that on any of my on any of my um, models or you know in the animated stuff. I've I've used it on on vehicles, but that's it. So really. This is, this is the important stuff. Oh, and you want to make sure your bake smooth groups is checked so that it does actually take these smoothing groups that you so painfully go through and set up sometimes. If you don't have that checked, it just comes in as one smoothing group or no. If you, if you export an object into UDK with no smoothing groups, it just combines it all into one smoothing group. And it looks looks terrible. It looks like butt. So, as long as you, you know, if, if you don't want your your model to look like a could be flushed down the toilet. Keep your keep your smoothing groups and everything good. So I'm gonna stop this and then when I come back I'm gonna combine these actually I'm gonna set up the arms and I'm gonna combine everything and, and actually get get on to animating. Okay, we are now officially ready to start the animation process. And I'm really just gonna jump pretty much right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit the properties on this, make sure it's not going to show frozen in gray, and I'm going to freeze my arms, okay, because I'm only going to be working on my skeleton. And what I want to do is I want to set up my IK controllers and make sure everything's working there before I go too much further. So what I want to do is I want to select my wrist bone, and I want to have an IK chain back to my bicep. So I just go to animation, IK solvers. You want to use the high solver. It's going to give you a little rubber band. Okay, I'm not clicking anything yet. I just click my arm. Now, there is a bit of a problem. If I take this in, you can see that this bends this uh, forearm twist bone. Also, if when you drew your skeleton, um, the rotations here were all zeroed out perfectly, which they're not here because I just matched the form of the of the um, of the animation. What can happen is when you take this little IK goal and move it, it keeps the arm perfectly straight. If that's the case, you need to take at least one of these bones, come over here to IK, and you need to um, make these preferred axis here at least like one degree or 0.1 degree in the um, which probably would be the Z Z axis and as long as, as it's not zero it'll allow it to actually bend okay if you go negative one it'll want to bend the arm backwards but the first order of business is we want to make sure that this bone doesn't bend so all we gotta do is just make all of these inactive okay on this exact bone and now you'll see that when I move this in that that forearm bone doesn't want to bend anymore okay so 
that's our first order of business. The other thing is you can notice that, that this IK handle here, this, this little helper, uh, it's actually kind of a, it's a dummy node, okay, it's a goal object, uh, is, is real tiny. So if you just come over to the um, display here, which is actually under motion, which is kind of weird, and uh, you look over here, you can see that one of these is going to change the size. I don't want this end effector to display because that's something different. Okay, here it is. It's the goal display, okay, which is this object. It's my goal object. And you just want to kind of boost up the size some so that when you're looking in wire in a solid view that you, that you can see this guy because you're gonna you're gonna want to be grabbing these quite regularly during during animation you could put a control box here and have it follow all that and, and, and anything you really wanted to do there but for the most part you can just use the goal object that, that comes with it and if I check different you can see I can can move it down and up you can see it kind of wants to to spin around until I until I bring it forward and things like that, and I'll I'll give you some hints and everything on how to how to fix all that. Okay, so we're just gonna hit the other arm really quick. Just pick the wrist, go to Animation IK Solver Size Sovereign, pop it back. Want to click my forearm twist bone here, come over to the IK and just uncheck all the axes here. Okay you'll see that I can still twist it alright if I'm on local view here okay doesn't want to bend anything when working in animation for the most part you want to stay in local axis on your rotation so I still have my my twist control alright and then what I'm gonna do is add my pyramid that I'm gonna use as my um, weapon socket point. So I'm just going to go to create pyramid. I'm just going to create one out. Okay, I'm going to change the color to a to a blue so it shows up and make it about 2.5 by 2.5 and I'll try 5 for now and let's try maybe maybe 8. We want to be able to see this guy too however we don't want to we don't want it like you know covering covering the hand we want to be able to see it see everything so we'll adjust it in a little bit and then next basically I wanna hit alt a to get my align and I wanna align this to my wrist bone in all of my axes as well as all my positions pivot to pivot okay so just basically check off everything you can see it's pointing up I don't want that. I want it to be pointing down. So I don't want to actually rotate the pivot. I don't want my guns facing up. I just want this object here that I'm using. Let me make sure I'm on angle snap. Okay. And I'm on local. And it's going to bring that down 90 degrees. Okay. Now the size of this is actually pretty good. Remember, there's not, not, not a lot of animation that happens in the palm. Okay, so it's not too bad, but if it's if yours is is in the way, you, you can pretty much size it at any time. Okay, maybe bring it down to like that or something. Okay, you want to be able to you want to be able to pick it. So something like that is kind of nice. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our goal object here which you could rename if you wanted to, but I tend not to. Just let them show as IK chain. And you go to Animation, Constraints, Link Constraint, and you get another rubber band, and you pick that pyramid. And now when I move the pyramid, okay, it doesn't matter if I rotate it, but if I move it around, the arm is going to follow that. Okay, and then I want to also have it affect my rotation of my wrist. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the wrist. I'm going to use another controller, which is Animation Constraints. And this is an orientation constraint. Again, I get a rubber band, and I'm going to pick the pyramid. Okay. I want to make sure that I have Keep Initial Offset checked. I'll show you why later. It was originally in the exact same position. Um, and if I click the orientation target, you can see that the target and the weight here are, are uh, it's the, showing the pyramid 01 and it's showing 50 and the weight here is 100 which means it's it's fully active so now if I rotate this you can see that my my hand is going along with it so now I can move it rotate it no problems okay let's go ahead and name this really quick to be underscore weapon socket okay that's the name we want to use you can use any name but this this makes a lot of sense all right, and now technically we're actually ready to go. But what we're going to do is we're going to do one, one more level of management here, which is actually going to be very useful. Come later, we're going to take our root object and hit Control and Page down, so that we get all of our bones. Okay, all 41 objects, and we want to include our uh, pyramid here because this is actually part of our skeleton. It's not skinned to anything on the gun but it is part of the skeleton and what we're going to do is we're going to create a selection set which is up here you can see I don't have any if I drop this down and this button next to it with the ABC and the pencil going into the the um, array field here is edit name selection sets okay so just bring that into view um, that that kind of that kind of went all went and docked on me okay I don't want it I don't want it to dock and then what you do is you say with all everything selected you just say create new set and I'm gonna call this character okay I could call it arms or or whatever or bones or something but I like to call it character and then if I drop this down you can see in that set okay I have 42 objects selected in this set let me uh, make this a little bigger you can see that it's got all of those objects in there. So if I deselect everything and I just come here and drop down to character, you can see I get 42 objects selected. So for all these animations, every time we go to export the animation, you need to select your bones. So we don't have to go and either you know hide everything and, and grab everything and then get rid of this and get rid of this and then get rid of the mesh and if there's anything else in the scene we don't have to ever manage that all we gotta do is come up here and just hit character okay at the same time it's not that hard to just hit this root control page down and then add this guy but the other thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this is part of the hierarchy otherwise it won't be part of the skeleton because remember a hierarchy has to terminate in one bone it has to be one parent across the whole board and if I take this right now and move it you can see that nothing goes along with it okay it's kind of a bird so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna link it to the root we don't want to link it to anything else okay now you'll see this arm's gonna stay behind but the other arm's gonna go with it and again that doesn't mess up anything in my selection set you can see it got it gets picked up okay it's not not highlighted go to my selection set hit character and it's highlighted and the magic number is 42 so if you can remember that number make sure you get 42 objects every single time if it's a character it might be 128 or 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 87 or something like that just or 99 you know remember remember that number so what we are ready to do now is actually go ahead and bring in our weapon to this scene so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this okay and I'm going to call this 1P underscore arms underscore SK mesh. Okay, I'm going to hit save. Alright. Now I'm actually good to export this if I wanted to. Um, but I don't need to yet exactly. What I want to do here first is import my weapon. Okay, go to my gun rigging scene where I set that up and just grab everything and hit OK. And it doesn't matter what material I'm using, so I'll just use the scene material here. Okay, and now the 
you need to do a little bit of management on the gun to make sure that everything is going to work work good. So right now this is it's it's moved, but in the rotation, if I check this to view, it's zero zero zero. So what I'm going to do really quick is hit Alt A with that's root selected, and I'm going to pick this and uh, weapon socket. Make sure position and rotation is checked and hit OK and you can see that the gun is not in a good position so what we want to do is we want to actually use our base object and get that in a good position like we had done before but we're no longer moving our root we're moving our base object so that our root stays anchored here to this wrist bone and this. Okay, so we actually have three bones here. We've got the wrist, we've got the weapon root, and we've got the weapon socket. Okay, three bones in one spot. However, for the most part, we only need to use this to control everything. So, what I want to do, like I said, is get the gun in a good position. And then what I can do is actually go ahead and pose this guy, make sure to be on local when I start rotating bones Okay. with the mesh frozen it is a lot easier to start picking things Okay, I do need to probably move the weapon down some. I don't want it breaching through his palm so much. Okay. Which means I'm going to need to move this, this wrist down a little bit more. Also, when you're doing bones, you probably don't want to use angle snaps so much. Okay, and you can see I got some passing through of the web and stuff right here. That's not too bad. It's not so bad. Now the farther I go down with this, the more I'll be able to actually wrap his thumb around it. Now I could break it a little bit, but that that's actually kind of incorrect. Um, and again, I can fix my skin modifier if it doesn't look like it's it's wrapping around. And I can cheat a little bit, just a little. You don't want to rotate in too many axes that that are uh, that are not correct, just to get that looking like it's in a good good position. Okay might be able to move the gun back a little bit more. It's a good idea to do this while the arms are straight. Okay. So now I can just go through and do the rest of my finger joints. I'm going to do them one at a time. You can also see that the gun is a little a little hard to get in his hand, right? I want to pass through it too much, but I also don't want to have too much space between these joints. It's kind of a balance. I may need to move the gun back in his hand even, even further so I can get these fingers wrapped around. You just kind of see where you're at, see how you can go around these things. Sometimes you need to make edits once it actually comes time to do this stuff. And it feels to me like actually like the gun needs to come a little f forward actually. Okay, I'm just going to work it in a little bit and then I can take these guys and bring them up a little bit. And 
if I want, I can bring this to here, or I can let it trail down if I wanted to go very comic book. Okay, I can leave that trailing out and up, you know, something like that. You leave that trailing pinky is the one of the comic book monikers, all right, one of their trademark things that they've got going on. And that's really not that bad. I just want to keep a... Oops. Make sure you hit these axes when you do this. Okay. Just want to keep this stuff together. And that's... It's not awful. Okay. Again, I had to have to cheat the thumb a little bit. But from this angle here, it doesn't look it doesn't look too bad. This is about the angle you're going to be seeing it at. Okay. So that's in place. And then what we want to do is we want to come in here to wireframe and grab our weapon root. Okay. And then we want to actually give it a link constraint to the weapon socket. So now what happens is we officially can move the gun, move that weapon socket around and control our weapon. Okay? So wherever we move that, the hands follow and the gun the gun follows. You can see I need to get it straight, but I also need to get it down. Okay. So now if you notice on your bones here, you don't actually have the ability to do any rotation. It's not it's not letting me. Okay. We need to actually control this through the IK. So if you come to the hierarchy tab and you hit IK, you have these preferred axes. And if I rotate them, you can see that the hand comes off the gun, but if I let go, it fixes itself. Okay. So in these different axes, you can move these things up and down. You can see, like I said, it doesn't while you're dragging, it doesn't maintain, but once you let go, it relinks. Okay? So what you do is you kind of say, okay, well it's I need it to be a little bit wider out. And then you let it go. Okay, see now it's a little bit wider out. If I go the other way, then it, it wants to fix itself. Okay. So we're gonna be looking at something kind of like that. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arm and just going to move it down out of the way because this weapon is not going to be in these animations unless you wanted to. Okay, just make sure I bring these into a good position. this hand's not going to be so much in the view. Alright, and let's just relax his hand a little bit. It's, it's kind of put, putting me on edge. Alright, just going to select these two guys. And Oh, the other thing, you want to make sure that you're on uh, multiple pivots if you have more than one, one bone selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick these four and hit control page down and then I can just kinda bend them all get a little bit more of a relaxed relaxed pose in the hand okay again I can edit the skin modifier a little bit more if I if I'm feeling like like I got some weird weird movement in my verts and things like that but for now I'm, I'm calling it okay and again, if I need to, I can always and I give myself a little bit of a twist. And I can move this completely out of the way if I want, like that, you know, but for the most part it's not going to be showing up. Okay. You can see I probably need to edit my skin modifier on both sides here. Okay. And actually, let me undo all that really quick because there's one step I forgot. 
Okay, what's the point of doing having two 200 undoes? I just want to get everything back to straight. Okay. What I'm going to do, I don't, I can't pick the the arm here, but I want to take this mesh and hit its properties and say don't show frozen in gray. And then I want to freeze that. And then what I'm going to do really fast is I'm going to hit control A and temporarily I'm going to say set as my skin pose. I'm going to say yes. And then if I make edits, if I ever wanted to get back to where I was, I can just say assume skin pose with everything selected. Okay. Just in case I need to go back to my skin pose. So what what that means, the good news for that, the reason that I'm doing that is so that I can get this in a good pose and then discover the problems that I have with my with my skin modifier fix them and then I can revert after I fix them okay sometimes the angle you gotta try to pick the right axis here this looks like it's generally going to be the Y to swing that arm up and down. Now let's say, okay, now I need to uh, I need to fix this skin weight here to fix this problem. I can f select my my mesh, unhide or unfreeze all. I can come here, fix my skin weights. You can see that what happened is the root bone is actually picking up these points for some reason where in reality they should be to their to their respective elbows so if I go to the right elbow you can see that the, the influence that I got on this vert is only 0.9 so if I make it 1 okay it's gonna fix that the other thing I can do is I can just go around this whole chain, just pick two on the chain, and then I can hit loop. It goes around and make sure that it's one, which it is. Okay? I come to this side and hit two going around this. Just so I can tell it that it's going in this direction. If you don't pick more than more than two, loop doesn't always know what to do. And now I want to go to my left elbow and you can see the absolute effect is blank because they're all different and hit one there and there I have it fixed and now if I want to export this guy in his root pose I can always go animation assume skin pose okay let me save it before I do that just in case I don't want to uh, animation assume skin pose and then if I hit control Z it will it will actually I can you know undo and redo back and forth so really what what you have is actually an option um, at any moment during any one of these poses you can export it and what will happen is your your skeletal mesh it's up to you you know when you let's go let me hit control a and go assume skin pose you can export this as your skeletal mesh and when you preview that object in UDK it'll be in that pose or you can export it in your idle pose just like that and when without any animations or anything assigned to the mesh it'll look like this so if there's ever any time any time in the game where there's a glitch such as a missed a missed calculation or frame or something this can happen if if there's something wrong with your your anim sets or or, or there's something you know there's a, a glitch in the game and if it temporarily for one frame or so misses an animation call it's not going to wing the arms out to the T pose it'll just put it for a second back to the idle pose which will be a little bit less noticeable when you do if you do run into to problems later so let me just freeze this guy so it, it is it is there's merit to uh, um, exporting your your mesh 
your skeletal mesh actually in an animated pose instead of in the T pose. Just going to get all these guys. And once again, kind of relax. Relax that. Let me just take the, the forefinger. Straighten that out a little bit. And then I'll take the pinky and curl that a little bit more. Okay. So it's... You can see that there's something going on here now as well that I may not have noticed that there's some influence probably happening back to the root as well so if I unfreeze all and I go skin modifier and you can see that my elbows picking up these where this really should be left ring 2 okay so left ring 2 should have that at 100 and then left ring 3 should just should at least get a little bit okay I can dial it in later when I if I want to curl that and completely fix it just like I did before which probably means that there's a chance, because if that got mirrored, it means there's a chance that I've got an issue over here, and I do. You can see that the right ring right ring 2 needs to steal all the influence Okay, and then right ring three can just take a little bit. Okay. So I've fixed my skin weight on the fly. And let's let's just say I want to do it a little bit further. Hide selection here. And I want to pick up a little bit more for from my, my thumb, I want to go have have a little bit more of the of the hand go. I can just continue to edit my skin weights. Okay, as I want. Maybe I even want to pick a little bit of that. Nah, it goes the wrong way. Okay, and I can just re-export this, which I haven't exported it at all yet. But if I, you know, when I do go to export it now, that's that skin modifier is fixed. You know, I can always go back and say I always want to make sure I export in this pose. Okay, um, I do want to keep in mind that we're gonna be exporting the gun and the arm separately. Okay, but what I want to do. Is I want to get a decent idle pose, and what I want to show is my four different viewports, and what I want to get is a an actual camera in the scene. So if I go to create cameras, I'm going to make this a free camera, and I'm just going to click in any view here. Okay. If I hit G over here, I want to make sure that it's at zero zero zero. Okay, and then I want to make sure that it faces, let me uh, just show this large, I believe if I come here I might be able to, I don't believe I have any ability to actually make it larger or anything like that. So, just going to make sure that I'm on angle snap, I'm going to rotate it up, and then I'm going to rotate it forward. Okay. And that's in my zero. Now, one good thing is that what you can do is match your uh, field of view that you have in your game. You can see that that box is pretty much the field of view here. And let's say your field of view in your game is 60. You can see that that widens. And then if I look, if 
I hit V and then C, if you look, my camera view, um, that's where the gun is in, in, in the screen right now, it's poking off the end. Another thing that you can do to help out is if you go to rendering render setup, if you have a general uh, say aspect ratio, let's say I'm gonna be playing this game at 1920 by 1080, okay, I can plug that into my render field and then what I can do over here is left click and so sh uh, show safe frames and you can see it's gonna it's gonna cut me off at the end of my screen and show me where everything is so if I the other thing you gotta remember um, let, me, let me make this my perspective and I'll make this my camera um, and I don't want safe frame in this this view I want it in my camera view okay you just left click where it says camera okay you gotta be careful that the camera doesn't get moved like it did here if I take this view and I actually pan around just like normal just say oh I want to see this better it moves the camera you gotta be careful try not to move the camera so what you can do I think which I don't usually do I usually just just deal with it um, is you can actually lock it here under link info under IK which means I can't move it okay if I try to move it it doesn't go anywhere however it also doesn't doesn't let me pan around over here so I'm actually locked which is nice you can see I got an X here and what that is is I believe becomes a little unwieldy sometimes let me grab this I believe what I'm seeing is this bone so if I take this bone and I hide it temporarily you see that X goes away so now what I can do is I can tune if I take this into solid view I can tune the position of my gun to be pretty much exactly where I want it and let's say okay well I'm not going to be